Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about the dramatic impact simply changing your wheel size has on an electric car's range. So right here we have some tires and they have about the exact same diameter as these tires right here. The difference is these are on 18 inch wheels and these are on 20 inch wheels. And this actually does impact range. And there's two unique things about electric cars uh, that kind of help explain this. First of all, electric cars don't store that much energy on board. Second of all, thankfully, electric cars use what energy they do have extremely efficiently. But what this means is they're very susceptible to small changes as far as how it impacts the vehicle's range. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at, you know, what does going from an 18 inch wheel to a 20 inch wheel, how does that actually change the vehicle's range? Now, we're gonna need some sophisticated equipment in order to be able to figure this out. So let's head to the whiteboard. So there are several aspects of this that I am curious about. So first we're going to look at the tire's width and see how does this tire width actually impact the vehicle's range. We'll also look at rolling resistance and we'll compare a very inefficient tire versus a very efficient tire and see how that can impact range. And then we will look at the wheel's diameter and see how does the wheel diameter actually impact range. Of course, going to those larger wheels means more aerodynamic losses. And then finally, we're gonna do some math to show how how we can actually save the planet. And the good news, it's pretty easy. So it's all gonna be great. So to start off, we are looking at tire width and we are analyzing this from an aerodynamic standpoint. So if you're looking at the front of a car, you could have a narrow tire, like a 205 millimeter width, or you could have a very wide tire, like a 305 millimeter width. And let's say your car has about six inches of ground clearance or 150 millimeters. Well, you can multiply length by width there and you can get your area of that front of that tire that is exposed to the air rushing underneath the car. And so we're simply gonna use this to look at how this change in the frontal area of the car actually changes its range. So you have that 150 by 205 that gives you 0.03 meters squared, or you have 150 by 305 that gives you 0.045 meters squared. So that's a difference of 0.015 meters squared per tire. You of course have two tires on the front of the car. So that gives you a difference in area of 0.03 meters squared. Now, if we're looking at energy required in order to make all this happen, we have energy equal to force times distance. So we're analyzing this purely from an aerodynamic standpoint. We're not gonna be looking at the aerodynamic changes from changing that wheel width from a coefficient of drag standpoint. We're not looking at changes in the tire's rolling resistance. We're not looking at wheel weight or inertia. We're just looking at that change in frontal area. And so we can do uh, the force of aerodynamic drag on the vehicle based on our specifications here. We're gonna be traveling at 75 miles per hour. We've got a drag coefficient of 0.25 and a frontal area of 2.2 meters. And so if we drive a distance of 200 miles or 320 kilometers, well, that is going to take us with these narrow tires right here, about 33 0.6 kilowatt hours. All right, well, what if we put some fat tires on up front? Well, that will increase our frontal area by 0.03 meters squared. So now instead of 2.2, we have 2.23 meters squared, and that gives us a total amount of energy required in order to travel 200 miles of 34.1 kilowatt hours. So a massive difference in the tire's width. I mean, we're adding 50% more uh, tire width there, and yet we're only increasing the energy required to travel 200 miles by half of a kilowatt hour. So a very small impact just looking at the aerodynamic impact on width frontal area alone on changing from a narrow tire to a fat tire. All right, so now let's look at rolling resistance. So as you're driving along, your tire is constantly deforming as it comes into contact with the ground. And those tire deformations create heat, which is energy lost. And so you have to accommodate for that energy lost. You have to hold that within your battery pack. And so we can analyze, you know, how much energy do we need to compensate for that rolling resistance? And so of of course, energy equals force times distance, and our force in this case is equal to our coefficient of rolling resistance multiplied by our normal force. In other words, how much does our car weigh? And so this coefficient of rolling resistance is very important. And for tires, it generally falls about 0.01, uh, but you know, for a very efficient, super, super good uh, passenger tire, basically as good as you can get, you might see a coefficient of rolling resistance around 0.005. And for a, a high rolling resistance, you might see something like 0.015. So this is gonna be kind of our best case, worst case range we're gonna go with in this scenario. 
And so we can look at energy equals force times distance. In this case, we're gonna have an 1800 kilogram car, about 4,000 pounds, and we're going to drive over a distance of 320 kilometers or about 200 miles and see how much energy does the tire alone use up. And so if we have our super eco-friendly tires here with their 0.005 uh, coefficient of rolling resistance, multiply that by 1800 kilograms, the mass of our vehicle times gravity, times our distance traveled, and you can convert these units into kilowatt hours, you get a total energy required eight kilowatt hours. Now, of course, our worst case here, we're looking at tires with three times uh, that coefficient of rolling resistance resulting in three times the energy requirement. In other words, 24 kilowatt hours. So a significant difference over the course of 200 miles, 16 kilowatt hour difference. So theoretically, the right tire can save you quite a bit of energy while driving. Now, realistically, cars are coming with tires that have pretty good coefficients of rolling resistance. So if you were to take a realistic example, and say your car came with a tire with a 0.01 and you were able to find an eco tire that had a coefficient of rolling resistance of say 0.008 well in that case you're only saving three kilowatt hours over the course of 200 miles uh, in other words you're gaining about 10 miles of range and that's not meaningless I mean that certainly is something I think it's just not quite as big as if you look at you know best case versus worst case all right so finally what impact does changing your wheel diameter have on the range of the vehicle and this is where things get really interesting so if you look at a graph of a vehicle's speed versus the resistive forces going against that vehicle well you'd have something that looks kind of like this as you reach higher speeds of course you have a much higher resistive force and so what happens is automakers actually have to submit this curve to the EPA as coast down data and so the way they submit that curve is they give the EPA an A B and a C variable and so the resistive force acting on that vehicle is equal to A plus B times the vehicle's velocity plus C times the vehicle's velocity squared. Of course, aerodynamic drag is a function of velocity squared, and so that's what this variable here is accounting for. And so you can use these curves to then build out your own, based on the battery size of the vehicle, curve looking at the vehicle speed versus how far can it actually travel given that you know how much energy it has on board. And so that's what I did for three different vehicles, the Model 3 Performance, the Model S Performance, and the Model X Performance. And the reason why I chose these three vehicles is because Tesla actually submits a different curve for the various different wheel sizes on each of these. So there's three different wheel options on the Model 3 Performance and Tesla submits a curve for each of them. So we can look at its range versus speed for each different wheel size. Now, what I was curious about is, let's say you're traveling at 75 miles per hour and the only thing you're changing are the wheels and tires. You're changing from an 18 inch to a 19 inch to a 20 inch and you're traveling at 75 miles per hour. What's your theoretical range with each of these different options based on that curve that Tesla submits? And so you can do that math and you get with the 18 inch wheels a range of 301 miles with the 19 inch wheels a range of 284 miles and with the 20 inch wheels a range of 262 miles so look at that a two inch difference in the wheel diameter and we're getting a 40 mile range difference I mean this is about 15 percent difference in range and all we've done is change from 18 inch wheel and tire to 20 inch wheel and tire that is pretty incredible that it makes that dramatic of an impact moving on to the model S performance with the 19 inch wheel it has a range of about 341 miles with the 21 inch wheel it has a range of about 315 miles when traveling at 75 miles per hour assuming a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack so an 8% difference and all we did was change the wheels and tires and then finally looking at the Model X performance going from a 20 inch to a 22 inch on the 20 inch wheels and tires 296 miles miles of range versus with the 22 inches 270 miles of range or about a 9% difference so ranging from an 8% to a 15% difference uh, in just changing that wheel diameter by two inches that is pretty wild to see now I wanted to combine all of this into one easy take-home message to prove that we need to bring back big side
sidewalls and get rid of these silly low profile tires. And so the way that we're gonna do that is by looking at carbon dioxide emissions. And so if you take the average electric vehicle in America, it emits about two metric tons of carbon dioxide. Now, let's say you take your wheels off, these you know low profile tires that come with the car, and you put on some higher profile tires. That's exactly what I did with my Model 3. And let's say you can save about 10% on range, which isn't an unreasonable assumption. We've got 8% here, 15% there. So not an unreasonable assumption that you could save 10% by switching to some smaller wheels. So we've got two metric tons, we're multiplying that by 10%, and we've got 200 million drivers in the United States. Uh, so we take that number and we divide it by the total amount of carbon dioxide emitted in the United States each year, and what do we get? We get a number of 0.6%. So what this number means is nearly 1% of all emissions in the United States could be saved by switching to big sidewall. And you know, there's other benefits there. You can resist pothole damage with fatter sidewalls, you've got better ride comfort, you've got cheaper tires, and on top of all of that, you literally save the planet. I mean, it's a win, 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 win. Can't get any better than that. And if you happen to come across a Tesla owner who says they own their Tesla, because they care about the environment. And then you see on their vehicle, they have the highest wheel option, the largest wheel size option. You can ask them, why do you hate the environment? Now, another interesting thing to think about is that if smaller wheels extend your range, well then you could theoretically get away with a smaller battery pack. And because the battery pack is one of the most expensive components of an electric car, this could mean dramatically reducing the price of that vehicle. So it's a huge benefit to go with a smaller wheel. Now, in summary, do what makes you happy. Uh, but it's at least worth knowing, you know, what are the actual differences in range uh, by using an 18 inch or a 20 inch wheel and what impacts that has on your efficiency. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave them below.